How's it going, YouTube? Your boy Slay is back in the building. I'm here today to bring you a new video. I know it's been a long time since my last upload, but in the words of Sam Cooke, change is gonna come. Today I'm bringing you my very first top 10 slash 20 list. And today is not a, what better day than to do a movie franchise list. The reason why I went this route is because I have seen so many movies in my lifetime that I couldn't just narrow it down to 10 favorite movies. So, I decided to use a franchise and go from there. And I can only come up with 20 at the moment. But, like every list, I have some honorable mentions. And let's get through this real quickly. They are as follows. Spider-Man, Madagascar, Land Before Time, Home Alone, Tarzan, Balto, The Godfather, X-Men, Pitch Perfect, and Step Up. That's the honorable... And those, ladies and gentlemen, are the honorable mentions of this list. Now let's get to it. Coming in at number 20 is, let's just say it's a guilty pleasure of mine. I enjoy watching it from the get-go. I've seen every series there is of it. And most of the movies. And what might that be, you may ask? Well, it's none other than Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I'm not talking about Michael Bay's. TMNT. I don't know about the original 1990 TMNT with the over-the-top action that was and the, and the strange costumes. This is a guilty pleasure at best. I enjoy it for what it is. It's an enjoyable movie franchise that I look to share with my kids one day. Moving on. Coming in number 19 is an under under the radar yet under I want to underestimate, there's the word I'm looking for, franchise, and that is American Tale. It basically, I don't really want to give the premise of it, but it's basically the story about this mouse and his adventures from, from his home country of Russia to a new life in America. But anyways, I digress. I highly recommend it. Go check it out. Now. Coming in at number 18, we start hitting the Disney Renaissance a little bit. And I've seen almost I've seen all these movies, but the reason why this move this movie franchise is at 18 is because the quality kind of dips, keeps the keeps the nose out of the first one. And that is The Little Mermaid. While the first one was a great movie. Its sequel failed to live it up to expectations, and the prequel is even is forgettable at best. But with that, let's move on. Coming at number 17, we're still in the Disney Renaissance, but it's a personal favorite of mine that I've watched countless times growing up. And it ends on such a like a open note that's so bittersweet they they could continue if they want to. And that is none other other than Aladdin. Yes, while the, the direct to DVD sequel of The Turn of Fart looked like something straight out of the Aladdin series, it was still enjoyable for what it was worth, you know? The songs were there. Of course, the person that voiced Homer did as best he could, you know? No one can replace Robin Williams. He will always be the genie. And I refuse to watch the new Aladdin. But let's continue. Coming in at number at 16, we got a villainous movie franchise in Despicable Me. Illumination, I, I believe, is a sub subdivision of either DreamWorks or Paramount, you know? But whatever the case is, they hit a home run with this one. Now, granted, the third one does suffer here and there, but other than that, this is a, a franchise I see myself in watching for years to come and it's still enjoyable. Coming in at number 15 was the final is the final change to, to this list being made. And that is Kung Fu Panda. I wanna know what that's going through their heads when they said, you know it'd be kinda of cool cool movie? What? A panda that knows Kung Fu. They're like, you're crazy. Let's do it. 
This is one of DreamWorks, one of the three, one of, this is one of, I call the series, I call it the big three, because DreamWorks has only three movie franchises that literally broke the box offices. And it's basically their mainstay to help to push it forward. Kung Pan, like I said, Pan loves Kung Fu. But there's so much heart behind it. It's really, it's a really enjoyable movie. I still have, uh, but to, have still somewhat speechless about this franchise. It's such a, you know what? I have hardly anything to say, so I'm gonna move on. Now, coming in at number 14 is a classic that you should all should enjoy. And <laughs> what? Because what better way to start? To what better way to break? What better way to break into this list than with time? Oh, and look at the time. It's back. It's time to go back to the future. Now this is a sci-fi movie <laughs> that's campy and z uh, somewhat campy but zany. The zaniness is really funny. You learn a little bit here and there about science, but in the end, it's all a lie. Just like that cake. But anyways, I'm hope I can't wait to see if they make a fourth one. I hear they are. I'm gonna go see it. You can't. It's a classic. What can I say? Now, coming in number thirteen, and rightfully so, is a a series. I did not a franchise. Let me phrase that I did not expect to be on this list or see. But when you're scrolling through TV one day, just laundry on with your, with your, with your old man, you're bound to watch something. And what can be at number 13? I'm glad you asked. It's none other than Rambo. That's right, Sylvester Sloan's Rambo's at number 13. I mean, from beginning to end, you see basically John John Rambo's story, and at the end of the fourth one, it, he has it, it's a very sweet ending to it too. While it is all the top with violence and action, it's a must-watch, you know. But I've ran, rambled off enough about this. Moving on, coming at number twelve is is a surprising one. I did not expect that uh, this to be as good as it is. The first one, the first movie I've seen of it was a bit slow, but rather enjoyable. I, mean, I was totally invested from get from Jump Street, and that is Planet of the Apes. I know I'm not talking about Andy du and Ronnie McDowell's version. I'm talking about Andy Serkis's Planet of the Apes with Caesar. In the words of Rome, Hail Caesar. Let me first, Hail, Hail Caesar. And I just forget about that. Anyways, that was the last of judgment. Please forgive me. Um, now, Planet A is basically a. What more can you say from a basic movie that involves Apes getting human like intelligence? But it also shows what happens when a new kind of disease is forced upon the world. And it is just phenomenal. Now granted the third one could use some work, but it's still a rather enjoyable movie, you know? Because I've heard the director say that this is, um, well rather seems like a most, but anyways, I like that, that, um, uh, I won't say reference or pillow. Anyways, let's move on. Now, this was a late entry um, on the list. I almost forgot about it. And this had a shape and shook up my whole list. Coming at number coming in at number eleven is none other than Steven Spielberg's one of his highest grossing films. And most memorable films, other than I won't say E.T., but and that is Jurassic Park. 
whenever I hear that music of Jurassic Park, it just fills me with so much nostalgia. It's not just nostalgia, the, the story is what drives it, you know? It, I've seen all five movies so far. Excuse me. And I will continue to watch it. Now, granted, the third one could use some more, the Jurassic Park 3 could use some work, but I love the fact that it brought um, a new antagonist to the, to the mix. But from phenomenal music to directing and casting, it is an amazing, uh, it's a well done franchise. Even in the Jurassic Park, Jurassic World movies. But anyways, moving on. Now, come, we're halfway home, ladies and gentlemen. Now, coming in at number 10 is, is a personal one for me. But because it, it has an amazing message behind it and one of the, the most touching and emotional memorials in history. And that is Night at the Museum. From, be, from, the, from get-go, you follow... You follow Larry Davis, I believe that's his name. Well, we follow Ben Stiller's, Stiller's character as he goes, basically from from basically trying to find, get back on his feet to basically passing on the torch. And that and isn't that what we all want to do one day? We want to hone our craft and find it, and then pass it on for others, for the next generation. That's pretty much life in general. And it had, and it also had a sweet ending because it paid tribute to not only the the fallen actors, actor Mickey Rooney, but also the late great Robin Williams. I still get chills every time I, 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 I um I say his name, you know. May he, may Robin Williams rest in peace. But enough reminiscing. Let's let's get let's finish this list off. Coming in at number eight. Oh, strike that. I'm sorry. I'm, I skipped one. Coming in at number nine <laughs> is the movie franchise that said put DreamWorks on the map. Now, granted, this was a big old f u to someone. Not mentioning any names. Um, but this is one of DreamWorks' flagship uh, movies. And that is Shrek. I love the lovable ogre from the swamp. The <laughs> each movie has their own spin. Now, Grant, while the third one was could have been better, but it was still in the drama nonetheless. But it ended on such a great note because we've all had that "what if" on the back of our minds. And luckily, the fourth one basically was a sweet ending to the whole. Franchise wrapping up nicely in a bow. From the music to great acting, it was phenomenal. But let's continue. Now we reach number eight, ladies and gentlemen. And what better place to be on my list than number eight? And that is The Lion King. I hear you, I hear you out there in the audience in the comments. Don't hate and please do not unsubscribe just yet. Hear me out. Reason why it's at number eight is be, just be glad it's on the list. First off, secondly, from the from the first from liking one, two, and even one and a half. Well, it's a the first one is remem most memorable. The most underrated one I have to say this is Simba's Pride. Both have ex astounding music. That can help sing, but sing along too. From He Lives in You to freaking Circle of Life. And even the the uh, one I want to have is a guilty pleasure of mine. And we all need some, some enjoyable and forgettable movies now and then. And that's just what it serves as. But even, but even some of the music is still enjoyable on that one as well. But liking will always place a special heart hold of a uh, place in my heart now coming in at number seven and rightfully so is another Sylvester Stallone franchise that I've seen 
Now, I've been missed that one too because I want I got her little bad. And that is the Rocky movies. Yes, Sylvester Stallone's Rocky, even moves, even Amanda Creed movies too because this is his movie. That is his movie too. But it's more like him taking a step back, you know. But we basically see Rocky from beginning to end and his journey to be the best boxer there is. The music is phenomenal. The cast and crew did a phenomenal job. And plus, I love how towards Balboa it shows him kind of taking a step back and become more of a teacher. Which is basically what he needs to do as a veteran boxer. And as an aging boxer. But if you haven't seen Rocky, what's stopping you? Watch the first four, skip five, and go to Balboa, Rocky Balboa. Because it's basically him going for one last ride. And then, that's what ties into Creed, you know. But anyways, let's move on. Now this, now number, uh, number six is a fantastic life from beginning to end. And it's very memorable. This is one of, I want to say, Will Smith's finest work. And that is Men in Black. I only have one nitpick, and that's with the ending song of MIB3. Other than that, it's a phenomenal movie franchise that I highly recommend you to watch. Basically, you follow Will Smith's character as Agent J. Yeah, Agent J. For going from a cop to basically an undercover secret agent to protect the world from alien invasion. It writes itself. But, it has fantastic music. The story is amazing. And from there you learn, learn about what's going on behind the scenes, you know. And who better do the ending song than Will Smith himself, you know. It ended on such a sweet note for him to go out on a bang. Because this was Will Smith's franchise. But I don't want to gush it too much over, you know. But anyways. Coming in now, we're in the home, we're in the home stretch, ladies and gentlemen. Now here's a, here's a top five. Coming in at number five, it, the reason why I put this here is because I've seen all three movies, but because growing up there were two camps you were in. You were either Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings. But little did I know there was a secret third group that hid it just being at the surface, and that was the Chronicles of Narnia. From the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe to the Voyage of the Dawn Treader, it is a phenomenal lit movie. Filled with it's not as grandiose as as Lord of the Rings fantasy or magical as Harry Potter, but it's right in the middle, right where you wanna be. The references are amazing. The music and cast have done a fantastic job with it. And it makes you feel like you're on this great adventure or like in peril, you know? But they always knew when to take a moment to let you catch your breath and enjoy the scenery within. But I think I've said enough about it. I need to move on. Run! Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, number four. And who else can take this spot? Well, it's none other than George Lucas's Star Wars. I've seen the, the miniseries. I've seen bits of the the um, series, but nothing beats the Star Wars franchise. And well, there are more better franchises out there. Like, you know what? Star Wars is a grand franchise. Now, grand the, the prequels could use some more, but the least the, the third one basically justifies them, you know. I, I'm i not talking about, I almost, I'm also including the newer versions. From stellar action, gorgeous animation, memorable music, to great acting, except for the first two prequels. It is a phenomenal ride that you don't want to miss. And I mean, I have a freaking Star Wars memorabilia in the background. That's how much I love this, sh this, this show, this movie. 
But unfortunately, Star Wars did just miss the mark of the big three. But hey, it, it got this high up. That, that just means something for it, you know? Now, rounding up the top five, we have number three. And who might that be? Well, let's just say you got a friend in me. It's none other than the Toy Story franchise. And I'm not talking about the fourth one yet, because it's yet to be released. I mean, one from one to three. We basically follow these toys that come to life and basically want to make their kid happy. But along the way, you find out more about about um, each character, you know, and what purpose do they serve, you know? It is a phenomenal ride that I will show my kids for years to come. And it's also one of my personal favorites. Well, yes, some of, from some of the um, animation is a bit dated, but for what it was worth on the first C um, CGI movie, it was astounding and a revolutionary at its time. Hey, it's one of the final Disney, it's one of the movies in the Disney Renaissance. Star Wars literally, I mean Star Wars, I'm sorry, Toy Story literally helped DreamWorks, I'm not DreamWorks, Disney soar. Soar. But anyways, now, just missing the number one spot, we have number two, and and this movie is by far one of the most underrated movie um, uh, movie franchises out there that doesn't get enough credit, especially the second movie. It is the last in the the DreamWorks Big Three movie franchise. But, and let me recap what the Big Three are. The Big Three include Shrek. Kung Fu Panda, and none other than How to Train Your Dragon. We follow this, basically follow the story of a runt of a Viking, scrawny Viking at that, as in his adventures with the newly formed relationship with his with a dragon. Man, from the cinematography to every, the whole world is phenomenal. Have you seen this, the seasons? between the first and second movie and there are eight seasons each and I love how it just takes us this world just takes it in we make that the world around it is just fantastic beautiful and even the, the flying cinematography makes you feel like you're actually flying I was sad to see the final episode uh, the final uh, movie drop recently but I'm glad I went out on a high note. It, it, this last one was literally toothless. The last one was toothless driven. Because, I mean, Hiccup's the chief of, of the village, of his village, of Burke, and, uh, and Toothless is the Alpha of the Dragons. You can't, in those two worlds will collide. You gotta go to your seven ways. But the ending was such a beautiful, was a beautiful send off. It left such an open note that you, it, they could continue if they wanted to, but it was a bittersweet taste in my mouth. And, and that's all I have to say as of right now. Now, we finally reached the pinnacle, ladies and gentlemen. What movie, what what movie franchises could knock out High Train and Dragon? Such as such movies, uh, critically acclaimed movies like *Higher Training Dragon*, *Lion King*, and *Stars*, and, e and even *Shrek*. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is none other than the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Eleven years of movies, eleven years, and twenty-two movies. Twenty-three counting if you want to add in uh, *Far From Home*. But from *Iron Man* to *Endgame*, I can't think of a better franchise than Marvel Cinematic Universe and it ended it on such a perfect swan song that is Avengers Endgame I don't want to spoil with the ending of end with the, the ending of Endgame but 
you, you will be on a fantastic ride from beginning to end. While there were, were some small dips in, in the franchise, that's gonna be, that's gonna happen in a movie franchise. And I've heard the Thor franchise was the weakest of the bunch. But it heard it ended on a really good note with Ragnarok. But with when I saw Endgame, it was just a perfect ending. While there's one glaring issue that doesn't really slow down the movie that much, I can't think of a better way to go out with this movie. Well, I can't wait, oh, man. As much as I'm looking forward to the Phase 4 of Marvel's Miss Cinematic Universe, everything will tie back to Thanos eventually. But I love how they, but I love how they put everything together and finally wrapped it up quite nicely. From the acting, music, to directing, it was beautiful. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my, is the last one of, of this top 20 list. In the words of Forrest Gump, that's all I have to say about that. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Slayer. You stay salty, my friends.